morning students sairam this is mega miss here and today we will continue with our lesson number 11 that is reflection of light this is our session 3 students okay now if you have uh, gone through the previous session we have studied about yes we studied the spherical mirrors yes we have seen the two types of mirrors concave and convex mirror right we have also seen how this concave and convex mirrors they are a part of a spherical mirror itself yes students and we have seen many terms which are related with the spherical mirrors yes you have studied a radius of curvature center of curvature then you have studied about the focal point uh, length yes you have studied about the principal axis principal focus yes so many terms and uh, as i told you very important you have to study these terms all the definitions are very important as i have told you this is also connected with your 10th standard okay this chapter is very important so study this chapter this year itself thoroughly so that it will be easy for you next year to understand the the next chapter which is going to be the continuation part in your 10th standard okay student so today we will continue with the chapter and we'll see the next part what we are going to study that is the drawing the reflected rays now how to draw this reflected rays now how to determine the direction that an incident ray will take after reflection from a spherical mirror how you can tell students that where when the any ray of light when it is falling on that spherical mirror where it will get reflected in which direction okay how you will tell that so how we can do that we will see this okay in the figure 11.8 now side by only you can see the figure 11.8 mn is a spherical mirror as you know we will show the mirrors in this way only okay so mn is a spherical mirror okay and ray aq is incident on it means aq is falling on this mirror okay this aq okay now cq is the radius now you know cq can you see the c must be then center of curvature okay and then cq becomes the radius okay and therefore perpendicular to the mirror at q so this is this ray whatever this ray is there okay whatever we have drawn this ray that is the segment which we have drawn it is going to be perpendicular to the mirror at q okay students now we will proceed the next part okay what is the next part that is thus angle aqc can you see this angle aqc is formed right is the angle of incidence yes because it has formed because of the incident ray okay according to the laws of reflection we have studied student last year angle of incidence and angle of reflection are of same measure yes thus while drawing the reflected ray qb when i want to draw this qb student this reflected ray what i will see the angle cqb means this angle okay this angle this one it should be equal to the angle aqc to this angle means for example this is of 45 degree students then this angle what i will draw should be also of 45 degrees okay did you understand very important go back open your eighth standard textbook study all the three laws of reflection very important we have used one of the law here that is what angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection okay students i hope till here it is clear okay we'll proceed to the next part now what is the next part student we can study the images produced by the spherical mirrors by drawing ray diagram so we can use this ray diagram this whatever now we have seen the diagram we call it as a ray diagram okay a ray diagram is a depiction of the path taken by the light rays means how the light rays can travel we can tell it with the help of the ray diagram okay to draw a ray diagram we use the following rules means we are going to use some rules to draw this ray diagrams which are based on the laws of reflection of light so very important laws of reflection of light okay so one by one we'll see the rule now the first rule rule one if an incident ray is parallel to the principal axis now you have the incident ray okay students what we are going to have we are going to have the incident ray where is our incident ray this blue color always is your incident ray okay as parallel to the principal axis see this is my principal axis it is written p yes then the reflected ray passes through the principal focus so can you see this is my reflected ray pink color and it is passing through this f point which is my principal focus 
ओके स्टूडेंट सो यू विल रिमेंबर फर्स्ट रूल इफ एन इंसिडेंट रे इज पैरल टू द प्रिंसिपल एक्सिस देन रिफ्लेक्टेड रे पासिस थ्रू द प्रिंसिपल फोकस ओके स्टूडेंट्स आई होप दिस पार्ट इज क्लियर टू यू ओके सी ब्लू कलर लाइन एंड द ब्लैक कलर वेयर द पी इज रिटर्न दे आर बोथ पैरल टू ईच अदर राइट सो दैट टाइम द रिफ्लेक्टेड रे दैट इज पिंक कलर लाइन इट विल पासिंग फ्रॉम द एफ पॉइंट दैट इज प्रिंसिपल फोकस ओके नेक्स्ट रूल इफ एन इंसिडेंट रे पासिस थ्रू द प्रिंसिपल फोकस ऑफ द मिरर द रिफ्लेक्टेड रे इज पैरल टू द प्रिंसिपल एक्सिस okay can you see here now what it is told now if the incident ray is passing this f is your principal focus right now if a, uh, the incident ray is passing through the principal focus then the reflected ray can you see this pink color reflected ray it is parallel see can you see this is my principal axis so reflected ray and principal axis this both are parallel to each other okay when students when incident ray is passing through f point is it clear rule number 2 okay we'll proceed students this is our rule number 2 okay now our rule number 3 if an incident ray passes through the center of curvature now can you see this is our center of curvature so when the incident ray is passing through the center of curvature of the mirror the reflected ray traces the same path back means can you see the arrow here blue color means your incident ray is coming in that direction through the center okay and see this pink color arrow means again it will pass through the same point that is the center and same path it will trace okay students i hope all the three rules you have understood okay so properly you will study all the three rules along with the diagram is it clear students i hope this part is clear to you okay is this clear everything okay now we'll proceed now the image is formed by a concave mirror okay now we'll see this is just a starting we'll see how the images are formed in by a concave mirror now the material you need a candle we are going to do a small experiment students we'll see that material you're going to need a candle or a glass lamp two cardboard boxes large cardboard sheet white paper concave mirror meter ruler wooden block okay now action means the procedure what you are going to do take the cardboard box large enough to hold the candle or lamp cut off one side and place the candle inside so inside that box i am going to place a candle cut out an arrow shaped slit from one side so that we get an arrow shaped light source okay so arrow shaped light source we need to get inside so like that we'll cut it and keep okay so see here you can see here how it is shown in the diagram okay make a screen of size 20 cm into 30 cm by sticking a white paper on the cardboard sheet and set it up vertically with the help of a wooden block fix the mirror vertically on the other cardboard box by making a slit on its top surface okay so like this i am going to see the image okay what i am going to do i am going to do the arrangement how it is shown see this is my cardboard box a concave mirror i have kept here you can see here a mirror here is my mirror and here i have kept a cardboard box with a white paper so that white paper will help me to get the image clearly okay so now we'll proceed place the screen near a window near a window you can see i have placed it and place the mirror in front of it such that the image of the sun or some far object okay forms clearly on the screen so what i have here is my uh, mirror right so i'll adjust this mirror in such a way that whatever the sun rays are falling it will get reflected and a clear image you can get it on this screen okay so what you have to do students measure the distance between the screen and the mirror we have to measure this distance between this two okay in this situation this is the focal length of the mirror so this is the way we calculate the focal length of the mirror okay each mirror has got a different focal length okay it depends on how clarity of the image it gives okay students i hope this part is clear to you we'll proceed 
set up the experiment as shown in the figure 11.10 means what we have done before in a dark room first what we have taken we have taken the sun rays to be fallen on that mirror and then any object whatever is there will uh, focus it and try to get it its image on the cardboard right you will be doing this experiment we have it in our 10th standard also okay place the mirror near the zero mark of the meter scale okay what we have to do keep the mirror at the zero mark okay place the screen in front of it and place the light source in between the two so that the distance between the mirror and the source is little more than the focal length of the mirror okay and what we have to do we have to when you are going to place the screen you are going to place the screen in front of it and place a light source you are going to take a light source and place between the two so that what will happen yes that the distance between the mirror and the source is little bit more you will keep it little bit more than the focal length of the mirror to get the clarity of the image okay so obtain a clear image of the source on the screen by moving the screen along the meter scale and perpendicular to it so you are go not going to uh, pick up that mirror and adjust it you have to just pull it backward forward backward forward along the scale and see where you will adjust it and get a clear image on the screen white screen okay the image will be inverted and larger than the source when you see when you adjust this what you will see image is inverted and it will be larger than whatever the source you are taking source means any object which you are trying to get the image okay as the image is obtained on the screen it is a real image as you are getting it on a screen we will call it as a real image now move the source away from the mirror so that the distance between the two is greater and twice the focal length of the mirror now we will take the source away from the mirror okay get a clear image on the screen by moving it towards the mirror the image is inverted smaller than the object and it is real so both you can take the source near to it also mirror and away from mirror also and both times you can get the images so once when it is near what you will get it will be larger inverted and real but when you are taking it very away from okay moving it away and then taking near to the mirror to get a clear image that time it is going to be inverted smaller than the object and it is going to be real okay students i hope this part is also clear to you okay so whatever the things we have studied today i hope you have understood this is the end of our presentation for today okay this is the last topic we have studied today we'll study the how to draw the ray diagrams and all in the live session also we will see so that it will be better for you to understand okay those are very important as they have you have as i told you before also you have this in continuation okay i hope whatever part we have done today you have understood it you will go through it properly okay rules are very important to remember please remember all the three rules okay we'll meet in the next presentation and continue with the lesson okay so thank you sairam take care